Oberpfaffenhofen near Munich, Germany, the control center of the European Space Agency, ESA. Mission Director Claudio Solazzo is in constant contact with Andrei Kuipers and is preparing for his return. But then he gets a call from Moscow. Yes. Okay, thanks. I understand. Uh, Tom, would you like to come here, please? Gustav. So we have a problem. I was just informed that uh, the next Soyuz will uh, not launch because it failed the test. Okay. We have to work on a new plan and on a contingency plan for... But my first reaction was that after having lost the shuttle, having problems with Soyuz, of course, would have been uh, a big uh, impact for the future uh, of ISS. I mean, the, the, the Soyuz is now the only vehicle that can take astronauts back and forth from the ground up to the station and back. So um, that certainly was a big concern for the future. Um, what will we do uh, if Soyuz doesn't, uh, doesn't work properly anymore? What happened? The Soyuz capsule intended to bring Andrei Kuipers back to Earth was destroyed while undergoing tests in Moscow. At the moment, there is no other spaceship. How will the astronauts get back to Earth by their planned return date of May 16, 2012? The main challenges were, of course, related, first of all, with health and safety of our crew on board. Uh, they live in a very harsh environment. Uh, the, the station is in space, outside the walls of Columbus or any of the other modules. There is empty space, there is no air, there is no protection from any source of radiation. And then, of course, logistics. It's a lot of uh, extra work that needs to be done to plan providing provisions for the astronaut to leave more time on board. There were numerous technical problems in the months before Andrei Kuipers' launch. When Progress 44P crashed, that was before our mission, uh, then there was a serious issue because the, they didn't know what the problem was with the launcher. And we used the same uh, type of stage as that Progress launcher. Uh, so there you want to be very sure uh, that it is not a systematic error that happens in all the engines. Once we were on board after a while, then uh, we heard there was another problem. And it was a test with, this, uh, with the next Soyuz capsule that got overpressurized. And uh, when I heard it, I thought, hmm, this means, uh, this means something for us. Claudio Solazzo uh, gave me all the information, what was going on and what it meant for me and the, the mission. Everyone in the control center of the Russian space agency Roscosmos is working under extreme pressure to come up with a solution. Aborted launches, crashes, interruptions, and postponements. In the past few months, there have been numerous mishaps on the Russian side. It's a highly sensitive political issue. Is the reputation of the Russian Space Agency for reliability in danger? I think the worries are more on the side of the Russian uh, system, the Russian uh, Roscosmos, because they had several events in a row. Uh, and of course, people started to raise eyebrows about quality control uh, on the, the side of Energia and Roscosmos. There are two Soyuz capsules docked onto the space station, but if they were to use both of them, there would no longer be any astronauts on board. For critics, this would be a welcome opportunity to demand the end of the billion dollar space station. A training facility outside of Moscow. Practice for another kind of emergency. Alexander Gas commutes constantly between Houston, Cologne, and Moscow preparing for his mission in May 2014. Together with his Russian and American colleagues, he is practicing a splashdown in the Soyuz capsule. Okay. 
This training program used to be carried out under realistic conditions in the Black Sea. But in light of budget cuts, some improvisation is now required to simulate waves. The astronauts spend several hours in the cramped hot capsule. Ideally, of course, you touch down on the landing pad in the plains of Kazakhstan, and that's usually what happens, a pinpoint landing there. But of course you have to be prepared for emergencies. For example, there might be a leak in an oxygen tank or fuel tank while you're in space. And then you have to immediately return to the Earth's atmosphere. And that means you might end up just about anywhere on the planet between 52 degrees north and 52 degrees south. And that might also be in the water. And that's what we have to be prepared for. Meanwhile, in Oberpfaffenhofen, they found a way to get Andre Kuipers back to Earth. But he'll have to stay on board for seven more weeks. I was very confident from the beginning that we would find a solution. And we worked it out. So we had to consider what would happen to the successive flights, what would happen to uh, the logistics on board, because keeping, let's say, a crew of six for one and a half months more clearly implies uh, we need more hair to breed, we need more food, we need a lot more sustainability items. So, a new Soyuz will bring the crew back to Earth later. Failure in this case is not an option, as a very famous flight director from NASA said uh, during the flight of Apollo 13. And that is history which remains with us as well. There is much rejoicing on board. The astronauts will stay in space for seven extra weeks before the Soyuz capsule that was destroyed during testing in Moscow can be replaced. I think it was the right decision. Uh, I was never worried for myself, not for the crew. I, was, I felt sorry for the next crew because their expedition would be shorter. Uh, so, uh, from that point of view, uh, uh, yeah, I thought, well, for us it's good because we can stay longer. Uh, at least we liked it. It could be the other way around. Uh, but the others have, uh, yeah, they have bad luck. In addition to routine checks, Andre Kuipers will conduct numerous experiments in the weeks to come, all of which are actually part of the subsequent cruise program. The control center for the European Space Transporter ATV is located in Toulouse, in southern France. The unmanned space transporter took off a week ago to bring supplies to the ISS. The docking maneuver will be controlled from here and is scheduled to take place tonight. Tension is high in the control center. There are some very critical phases. The first is at 39 kilometers. That's a very critical moment because that's when the ATV first commences electronic communication with the station. A dialogue must be established and it must take place on time. The satellite is moving towards the station very fast and we only have 20 minutes to ensure the communication is working. If that doesn't happen, the rendezvous can't take place. Beginning of block six of, uh, the, the docking maneuver is computer controlled. Meter by meter, the 20 ton space transporter glides toward the station. The team in Toulouse is in constant contact with the control centers in Moscow and Houston. 
In point of fact, the astronauts on board are intended to monitor everything and intervene to influence the ATV's behavior if needed. Although they can't reprogram the ATV, they do monitor its approach. They make sure the ATV maneuvers within its safe approach corridor, which is safe for the station and astronauts. If the ATV departs from the safe approach corridor, they can abort the rendezvous. This animation shows the precision with which the engineers work to ensure the space transporter can dock onto the station. Mission accomplished. Boom! Contact. Contact capture. Capture. Allez. Yes. Relief. The unmanned space transporter has docked onto the International Space Station. Now, there's hard work to do for the crew on board. It takes 15 hours before they can finally open the hatch to the space station. Whenever there is a spaceship uh, coming, there is uh, a possibility of debris, There's things floating loose, maybe sharp uh, metal particles or something like that. Then it's always uh, wise to just put on goggles and masks just to be sure, but like now with ATV, I mean, you open the hatch, you may notice that it's very clean, there's nothing floating, and uh, the air smells good, and so uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very nice spaceship, the ATV, so that was okay. It's, it's just a safety precaution. The space transporter has delivered a cargo of more than six and a half tons. It will undock again in six months, filled with refuse. It will burn up upon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. ATV brings a lot of uh, interesting items. Um, it brings new equipment, it brings uh, food, clothes, special care packages for the, for the crew, uh, consumables, all kinds of things that the crew uh, needs, be it for experiments, uh, be it for uh, living on board. The final weeks of Andrei Kuiper's space adventure are at hand. Instead of five months as originally planned, he has been in space for more than half a year. I spent the last days a lot of time at the window at night when everybody was already asleep. I curled up in the cupola and so the whole earth under me and it was fantastic. Complete orbits and uh, beautiful thunderstorms, and they see all the different star systems come up, the constellations, and then uh, some the planets coming up, Jupiter, and Venus, and then I saw the moon, and then the sunrise. We had northern light even on those last orbits. And then on July 1st, 2012, it's time to say goodbye. The return uh, in the Soyuz is the most exciting part of the flight. People mostly think of the launch, but uh, returning is very exciting. Somewhere above Iraq, Turkey, we enter uh, the atmosphere and you see that because it becomes pink outside and uh, then orange and you see sparks and then all of a sudden you get heavier and heavier. One, two, three times, four times, 4.7 times a body weight. So it's hard to breathe. So for several minutes uh, we are in this uh, fireball being squeezed in our seats and then you, you brace for the impact and then you see a big flash and then you, you hit the ground. It's a, it's a small car accident and uh, very wild. You move, uh, my knee uh, hit the dashboard and we, we fell, we tipped over so for a moment and then we came up right again. It 
if you come out of the capsule uh, after half a year, it feels really strange. It feels like a magnet is pulling on you. Um, you see also that we that are pretty pale, so uh, say the blood pressure reflexes are down. But I, I felt good enough to uh, to recognize people and to wave and to make the phone call. So also I realized that people were of course worried, but I could smile and uh, so back on the planet. <laughs>